Thank you, Mr. Speaker. More coffee is needed. Um, Mr. Speaker, six times since 2011, the Virginia State Senate has passed the Equal Rights Amendment, only to see this important civil rights le legislation thwarted in the House of Delegates committee system. 81% of Virginians support ratifying the ERA, and Mr. Speaker, it's hard to get 81% of people to agree on anything. But despite overwhelmingly su popular support for the ERA, the Virginia House of Delegates hasn't even allowed it in this chamber and an opportunity to vote on it. Other elected bodies in our Commonwealth have taken the opportunity, even if it was just symbolically. From Southwest Virginia to the Eastern Shore, and in Republican counties like Page, Shenandoah, Powhatan, and Prince George, county governments have passed local resolutions in support of this ratification. Many city councils have also passed resolutions, including Alexandria, Blacksburg, Chesapeake, Newport News, Norfolk, Richmond, Suffolk, and Virginia Beach. These resolutions were almost all passed as bipartisan, unanimous votes to respect women, equality, and the Virginia in which we want to live. Even Prince Edward County, once the epicenter of massive resistance, passed a resolution in support of the ERA. Virginians are ready to move forward. Mr. Speaker, in over four decades, this body has never taken a vote on the ERA. It's 2019, and it's beyond time to happen. Virginians deserve better than their elected officials hiding behind subcommittees and procedural maneuvers in order to avoid voting for gender equality. And here in this body, especially the women of the House of Delegates, deserve the opportunity to resent represent the constituents and vote on the ERA. The constitutional amendment to ratify the ERA is about protecting gender equality under the Constitution. However, the decision of this chamber to allow a vote on the amendment is also a matter of respect. Respecting colleagues and constituents, women and men, Democrats and Republicans, enough to allow our voices and our votes, our votes to be heard. This is not a partisan issue. Multiple colleagues on the other side of the aisle have expressed support for the ERA. And in fact, a resolution that passed the Senate was carried by a Republican patron. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I laid upon your desk, on your table, a rules change affecting nothing but the ability of the resolution to have a vote. It's an extraordinary measure, but this is an extraordinary situation. And while the rules change is about respect and equality for women, and it was first read aloud in this chamber, it was met with derision and scoffing by many on the other side of the aisle. In fact, the delegate from Shenandoah even introduced a competing resolution in an attempt to silence not just my voice, but the voices of women and men across the Commonwealth. Being silenced is nothing new for women in the Commonwealth, excuse me, nothing new for women of the Commonwealth, and neither is fighting for our rights. And in a hot mic moment yesterday, we heard a gentleman say, we're going to kill this bill. Mr. Speaker, voting on a constitutional amendment for gender equality would be one of the most impactful votes that many of us will ever take in our lives. We should not shy away from the opportunity to correct the historical exclusion of women and girls from our Constitution. Mr. Speaker, to be clear, a vote for this rules change is a vote to let the Equal Rights Amendment get to the floor for a vote. It's a vote to put democracy back into our process, and the proposed rules change before us are not simply procedural votes. They are fundamentally votes on the ERA, based on the members of this body on both sides of the aisle who have expressed support. I believe it would pass this chamber if we just allow it to come to the floor and have a vote. Here in Virginia, we know how to make history, for better, for worse. But Mr. Speaker, I prefer to make history for the better. Let's take a bold stance. Let's take a bold stance for equality with a full debate, with a full floor vote on the Equal Rights Amendment by the end of this session. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.